In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how to convert the D-Log footage off the DJI Air 2S drone into more of a standard Rec. 709 look, along with some tips on exposing D-Log and color correcting it in DaVinci Resolve. I'll also provide the LUT I created in this video as a download in the description below. The color chart I'll be using is the Chroma Match Pro from DSC Laboratories. You can see that I have the pocket version and that I put it in a little case here. So now you can see I'm aiming the drone camera at the white card and I have auto white balance enabled and it's calibrating in and I'm aiming the card at the main light source which is the sun. It's hovering around 5600 Kelvin now so I'm going to go and disable auto and lock that white balance in. So now I'm using shutter to get ideally a 0, 0.0 exposure value reading. On the bottom right corner you can see M.M 0, 0.0 and I have to use the shutter to control exposure here because the aperture is locked at f2.8 and then I move back so that I can get a good focusing on the chart at the minimum focusing distance. So what I recommend is just to put on an ND filter that will get you to a low enough shutter speed that is desirable for you, set ISO and lock it at 100, set shutter to auto and then use EV to control your exposure and then set a button on your controller to lock that exposure. So right now I'm at plus 0.3 EV which is a little bit higher than like zero obviously but it should be fine. I'm trying to get those mid-tones a bit higher. You can see here this scene is at zero EV and a lot of people like to expose log footage to the right, uh, exposed to the right, but that's not really correct. It should be exposed with basically zero EV. The camera is usually right in its reading, but there are some cases where you want, uh, like for example on this shot, the sun would force the camera to lower the EV value, so I'm actually raising it to plus 0.7 in order to get a better overall exposure for the mid-tones of the image. So yes, use your own judgment. So here in DaVinci Resolve 17, I'm going to go to Project Settings, Color Management tab, and make sure my timeline color space is set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So now I'm going to bring in the reference file that DSC Labs provides with our Chroma Match charts. And I'm going to isolate the 11 grayscale values. And you can see on the waveform monitor, they are equally distant between each other. They're also in a straight line. And this is going to be very useful when we transform the D-Log footage to more of a Rec. 709 look, because this chart is calibrated for Rec. 709. On the vector scope, set at 2x gain, you can see that the lesser saturated colors form a honeycomb pattern on the vector scope, and that's going to be very important. You can see that the uh, highly saturated colors fall significantly off the vector scope, but I'm not going to worry about them as much. I'm mostly focused on the honeycomb pattern. And again, the vector scope has to be set to 2x gain. And uh, as long as it's set to 2x gain, you'll be able to see the uh, uh, colors fall within the six colors, the uh, magenta, blue, cyan, green, yellow, and red. So now I'm back on the drone footage, and I'm going to create a power window, or basically a mask, around the 11 grayscale values on the chart. And then I'm going to affect temperature and tint in order to neutralize the color balance throughout the exposure range. And after that, I'm going to go ahead and create some points on the curves and try to create that equidistant look between the bars on the waveform monitor. And I'm going to try to keep my curve as simple as possible and have as few points as possible as well. So I don't really want it to be an S-curve, so I've changed my mind. I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And then when I'm done, I've introduced a little bit of shifts as well in the white balance again, so I'm going to go ahead and tweak that at the end with lift and gain. So now I'm creating a power window around the colors on the chart that produced a honeycomb pattern. And you can see when I bring up the vector scope, I'm verifying that my gain or my zoom is set to 2x. I'm going to increase saturation from 50 to 65, and then I'm going to create the points on the hue versus hue and hue versus sat curves. And then I'm going to make sure that the initial or main colors are in their boxes. Now there's three colors in between the main colors. And I'm going to create additional points on the hue versus sat in order to get those colors lined up. You can see yellow and red caused me some trouble, but with a bit of tweaking I'm able to get that line straight. And now I'm going to bring up the reference chart and you can see uh, the before and after. You can see the reference as well as my edit, which is actually pretty close. It's quite good. So now I'm ready to save my LUT, so I'm going to right click the clip and go to Generate LUT 65 point cube. And I like to name my LUTs based on camera name and then the Kelvin value and then a basic description of the lighting conditions the LUT is generated for. Now I'm going to go back to that folder and Resolve likes to append the file name of the video file to the end of the LUT file, so I'm going to get rid of that as well. I'm going to copy that file and then I'm going to get out of that dialog, 
I'm going to go to the LUT folder, open file location, paste it in there, and then get out of that folder, and then right click inside the LUT field, refresh, and the LUT appears. So now I'm going to color correct the three shots that you saw in the beginning of this video with the LUT that I just made. Now, this is not going to be a filmic or artistic type of look. It's just going to be a color neutral, sort of just color accurate type of look. And then you apply your creative look after. Alright, let's apply the LUT that we created to the footage. You can see that it darkens the image quite a bit, and that's because of the curve that's baked into the LUT. Now, everything after the LUT is clipped, and it's basically in Rec. 709 space, and everything prior to the LUT is in Log space. Now, we want to increase the exposure, but we're going to do it in Log space. So, we're going to select the node with the LUT applied and press Shift S to add a new serial node prior to that node. And we're going to use the, the offset control to effectively increase our exposure in Log space. And then we're going to add some contrast, but we're going to do that in Rec. 709 space. So we're going to select the node with the LUT and press Alt-S to add a new serial node. And we're just going to use the curve controls here to add some contrast. And if you want to add an S-curve, maybe you can, you know, maybe add another node and make this pop a little bit more. If you want to mess with the midtones, who knows, then you can add another node and give that a bit more balance. You can see Shift-D, this is before, this is after. And as you can see, that was a very quick grade, and it looks quite nice. So now let's go to the next shot. We're just going to apply the LUT as well. Again, it's lowered the exposure. We're just going to press Shift-S to then use the offset control in log space. Now we're going to add another node after the LUT, and we're just going to use our curves. And you can see this cloud is a little bit overexposed. So, I mean, if you really wanted to lower that, you could go into log space and press Shift S. Now, by default, it would this uh, these wheels here would be lift, gamma, and gain. But when you're in log space, you want it to be in log wheels. So we'll have shadow, midtone, and highlights. I'm just gonna lower the highlights in log space. So I press Shift H. You can see I am in log space. So let's press Shift H again to unhighlight that. So. I don't want to go too far down because I want to maintain the integrity of the brightness of the sky. So I think just lowering it a little bit is fine, but you don't want to overdo it. Nobody cares that that cloud is overexposed. It's not that important. And then what we can do is back in Rec. 709 or like normal standard dynamic range space, we can maybe add another node and make the midtones pop a little bit more. And there you go. And that's really all there is to that before and after before and after. And if you want to change the color temperature, I would recommend probably doing it in log space, but you could do it in Rec. 709 as well. But here we go, we're in log space. We're going to tweak the temperature, and as you can see, it it's quite nice. So again, we're doing it in log space. But again, feel free to try it in Rec. 709 as well. So that's before the temperature adjustment and after the temperature adjustment. So the sky looks uh, more the sky looks more blue now. Alright, so now in the final shot, let's apply our LUT. Let's press Shift S to increase the exposure here. And log space, of course. And now the same techniques don't always apply to every shot. Um, of course, this one was recorded at plus 0.7 EV, so um, let's go and add a LUT or a node after the LUT. And let's do our some of our some of the edits we were doing previously, but you see it's not very smart to do that. Uh, the, sh the shadows are getting really crushed there, so let's do this in log space over here. Let's lower the shadows. You can see that it's quite a bit more natural. And then over in Rec. 709, let's increase the midtones a little bit. And you can see before and after, that looks quite good. And of course, you can play with the highlights as well as uh, you know tweak it however you wish. But that's the general idea. Um, feel free to uh, uh, download this LUT and then apply it to your shots. Uh, it should work pretty good for daylight conditions as long as you follow the general guidelines I provided in this video. And if you're using it for a cloudy day, you could you know tweak the color temperature in the tint. And it'll probably work, but it's more of a demonstration LUT. I'll be making more of these as well for uh, other daylight conditions, but this should be a good one to play with and you could at least grade some of your D-Log footage with it. So I hope you learned something from this and thanks for watching.